Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and we are back for part 3 of Little Nightmares 2 in first person mode. And if you don't know what I mean by that, we have a mod provided by a YouTuber called Nico where we can press one button on the controller and hey presto, we're looking at six through Mono's eyes in first person. Now, in the previous videos, we went through the Hunter's Wilderness Woodland, we also went through the Teacher's Schoolhouse and escaped the bullies and the teacher there and now we have arrived in the hospital and we're going to go through the hospital and check out the sights and sounds through Mono's eyes giving us a new look and a new interpretation of the game. I'm not going to show you the entirety of the hospital rather the highlights of this chapter as we have with the previous two so sit back relax and let's get exploring as Mono and Six travel through the hospital in first person. As you can see this is very creepy we can see one of the patients, one of the mannequin-like patients there in the wheelchair. Get a bit of a closer-up look when seeing through Mono's eyes like this, don't we? This should be interesting. We've got this door here, of course. We have to push through. Whoa! Oh, we almost fell. We almost fell. So it actually changes to third-person view during that cutscene there. A little bit glitchy, of course, because, you know, the game obviously isn't made to be played like this. We have to remember that. So this bed section, guys, is almost impossible to play in first person. Like, it can be done, but I'd rather not. I think um, we'll have a little look around through Mono's eyes. As you can see, it's an impressive sight. You can see Six just climbing up there. What I didn't notice as well... If you have a look over in the corner there, guys, behind these beds, there's actually a patient in one of the beds over there. Like, if we have a look, you can see really clearly here that one of those beds actually seems to have a patient in there still. So the doctor obviously tucks his patients into these beds, sort of suspended above this chasm. It's pretty creepy. Okay, so we've arrived into the depths of a hospital, and here is the flashlight. So we're going to need this. You can actually see through Mono's eyes with the flashlight now. Although it seems quite hard to control. He doesn't seem to like generally look in the right direction with the flashlight when we're in first person mode. So I do think this is actually going to be very tricky to play with this mod. But still, we can have a look at some of the stuff here. Look, there's a weird contraption here that I hadn't noticed before. Some kind of breathing apparatus or something that the doctor perhaps strapped to the patients. What else do we have? This is of course where we find the glitching remain of the little girl. There's this sort of little cart here. It's got some potions in it or medicines and a kind of mannequin leg. It's pretty creepy. Here's six. She goes, don't shine that light in my eyes. It's way too bright. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Are you trying to give me a migraine? Sorry, six. I won't do it again, I promise. Well, actually, I'll take that back because these controls are pretty hard to uh, to get to grips with. You can have a look at the little ticket machine here, at the reception area. Of course, 249 people waiting to be seen by the doctor. He was obviously a popular doctor. I don't know why because, I mean, he was pretty much just savaging anyone that came in to his surgery and transforming them into these horrific creatures. But for whatever reason, maybe he's the only doctor in town. I don't know. Oh, there's the TV. We've got all these creepy looking patients just gathered around the TV screen watching their Saturday morning cartoons. We're going to have to switch to our other view here. Okay, let's straighten out this corridor and then we'll go back into first person as we enter the corridor. There we go, we're in. And this, of course, is the in-between dimension, the path to the signal tower where we will eventually be freeing Thin Man from. We get a really good look at it through Mono's eyes, through the door, of course, with the six written on it there. Ooh, we got kicked out. And six just saves us. Just in the nick of time. Next time, she's not going to be quite so lucky, of course, as Mono does let Finn Man out on his next trip into the television screen. 
Right, so let's explore this creepy hospital. We, of course, first need to go this way to get the key to unlock the door upstairs. And we're going to be able to see the x-ray machine through Mono's eyes in this room. Of course, we've got all of these creepy little pictures here, well, x-rays. We've got one of a human head there, one of, like, a pelvis bone there, a hand, and then you can see... We've got like a skull, we've got the key inside of the teddy bear, of course that's the clue to solving the puzzle. And then we've got this scan of a brain as well, which shows, I don't know, maybe one of the patient's brains. Maybe it sh reveals some secret as to what the doctor does to his patients. I wonder, if we do that, and then, yeah, we can see Six's skeleton up close. <laughs> Look at us. She's like looking and going, hey, I can see inside myself. Although that's a bit strange because, of course, she shouldn't be able to see a skeleton. Only the x-ray machine should be able to reveal it, so I don't know what's going on there. And this is an interesting room, of course, to see in the first-person perspective, guys, because we've got all of these drawings here, and these drawings actually equal uh, characters and things that we see in this world. So at the very top, of course, we've got the Thin Man, two pictures of him. We've got this little ghost drawing, which is the ghost child that we see in the comics, who a lot of people have speculated might be part of a DLC that's coming up. Um, we've got this one, which looks a bit like the viewers, because its face is all sort of distorted there. Then we've got some clothes, of course, just lying around, because, of course, the viewers are taken by the signal tower and their clothes are left behind. Then, of course, that thing that looks like a turtle is the doctor crawling on the ceiling. The all-seeing eye of the signal tower... Another picture of the Doctor there, reaching down from the ceiling. That spiral seems to be show, uh, suggesting, of course, the Signal Tower's hypnotic effect on people. The eye in the TV there, again, suggesting the hypnotic effect that the Signal Tower has on everybody. And then this is just a kind of scratched out drawing. I don't know what that's meant to be. And Six is offering us a duck. She's like, hey, want to take this duck? No, Six. We don't want this duck. We don't need this duck. We need the uh, little toy over here. I think this is the one which has a key inside it. We can actually see now, if we pull the lever, the key inside the toy. And we can also see Six holding up her duck. So there we go. Right, so let's take this toy bunny, this stuffed bunny rabbit, and let's go downstairs and burn it. Right, here we are on the bottom floor. Let's take our teddy, let's take our bunny rabbit, and we need to put it in here. There we go. That's in there. You want to throw your toy in too? Yep, there we go. Six, we'll burn them both. And... There we go. Incinerate. We get a good look inside the incinerator as it burns away. And now, we can climb in and, of course, obtain the key. There we go. That was fun, wasn't it, Six? We had a little adventure there, burning some toys, being destructive just as you like. Let's head on back up. Right, here we go. The door that needs to be unlocked by that key we just found. There we are. Access granted. And of course, this room is like where the doctor operates on some of his patients. We have the operating theatre there. The big light that he would turn on to really get in close and personal with his patients and see what he's doing. And I kind of theorized that that light is the reason that they freeze when you shine the light on them because they remember this horrific surgery that happened. We've got a patient which either was a botched job and didn't work out or is still a work in progress. He's, of course, on the table there. And you can see if we look up to the sky or the ceiling, I should say, we've got all these mannequin parts that the doctor is going to use on his victims. Right, come on, Six. Boost us up. This is going to be interesting, seeing if we can do the fight with a giant hand, the living hand, um, in first person. I'll switch it over, guys, so you can see the hand come to life through Mono's eyes. Okay, there we go. But here it comes. It's scuttling off. It's went into those boxes. Where's that hand? 
was there. Where is it now? It's there. Look at it scuttling away. And there's another one there. Oh no. Ah! Go. Run. This is going to be really tricky like this. Run. Go, Mono, go. We're climbing. Go. Ah, the hand. He got us. I can't play that section in first person, guys. Go, Mono, go. And through we go. Okay, nice. Right, so let's switch back to first person now. We've dropped down and completed that section. And we can see this workshop area through Mono's eyes. Oh, what was that? Something above us. Let's have a look on this table, on this desk, and see what we can see. Just legs everywhere. What the heck was that noise? The hands above us. So there's not too much to see here. It's just a close-up look at, like, mannequin arms and legs. The hands above us, though. Oh, there it is. Whoa. Okay, run. Oh no, there's a hand, there's a hand. Right, grab the hammer, Mono, grab the hammer. Okay, we've got it. And smash it. Yes, we hit it. Nice. Come on. You want to play? Where you at? And jump. And smash. Oh, we got it again. Nice. Want to dance? I'll dance with you. Oh, we got him. Yes, we got the hand. Smash. And again. Smash. We get him one more time. Yes, there we go. Well, that was actually not too bad. That wasn't too hard in first person. It was quite fun as well. Here you can see some of the patient designs in these pictures here. We can't read this, uh, it's not legible, all of this text on these receipts. And here we have six twisting the fingers of this mannequin arm. And just being generally quite sadistic. Do you want to leave that alone, maybe? Do you want to be a normal girl? And not a psychopath? That would be nice for a change, you know? Look at that, so creepy. One of the patients just sitting there, chilling. Luckily that one doesn't come to life. But the power cell is inserted. You can see here there's a picture of a doctor up there performing some kind of surgery. He looks a bit more normal at that time. It's almost like his origin is that he was once quite normal. We've got some corn on the cob there. That can actually be put in the furnace downstairs to make popcorn if you guys wanted to do that. You'll get a little achievement for it. But I think the first thing is first we need to get Six to boost us up into this cell here. And then we're going to face our first mannequin. Thanks for the boost Six. Over we go. And as you can see guys, there is our first patient now. This is actually going to be pretty tricky to do, I think, in first person because the controls are really hard. Uh, but I'll give it a go. I'll see if we can um, use the flashlight on him. Gonna come to life? Yeah. Oh no. Oh, he's moving. He's moving. No. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh my god, it's so hard. It's so hard to control. Oh, there he comes. We made it. That's so creepy. Right, let's head on deeper into the hospital. We've got another one here. Another patient. Let's have a good close-up look at this patient. As you can see, that is pretty creepy. All bandaged up. All bandaged up and ready to go. Right, let's keep going. I 
think we have to go this way, right? Look at all of these mannequins just standing around. I'm so happy these ones don't come to life. I remember when I first played this, I was like, which ones of these are actually going to be a threat? And which ones are just for show? And it happens all of the ones in this corridor are just for show. But this room is a very different story. In this room, many of these mannequins will come to life. And again, I don't think there's really going to be any way that I can do this room in first person. Okay, guys, you can see we've got two mannequins coming for us now. I'm going to try and back away under the bed and see if they come for us. Yes. There they are. That's horrible. Okay, now I think I'm going to have to switch back to third person for this. This section's just too hard to do in first person. There's no way you can do it, really. The only way we can possibly do it is just give ourselves a little bit of space and I can maybe show you guys the mannequins from, like, our perspective here. Yeah, look, there you go. You can see them all in first person here. But they are going to come for us rather quickly. No. Stay away. Man, that is horrible. That is nuts. We've got, like, the flashlight on them just. No, you stay away. Stay away, stay away, stay away. He oh, he didn't get us. He didn't get us. He didn't get us. He didn't get us. He got us. I, sh I spoke too soon. Whoa. <laughs> just changed it back to first person to show you guys that. That is creepy. Look at that guy. Tried to get us, but you failed. Get a really cool up close and personal look at these patients. We still have to wonder what happens to these guys. Like, how do they get transformed? What is the process there? Like, we theorized on it, but we don't know for sure, do we? And here we go the room with the dirty toilet and the cheese. Lovely. You can actually pick up this cheese and take it into a secret room which is hidden down here. You can see there's this room. This actually appeared in the comic books, guys. There's a little ghost girl there originally, um, a glitching remain of the girl who appeared in the comics and died in this room after digging a hole through the floor with a spoon. If we throw the cheese down the hole, of course, you can hear something eating it. That could be a rat or perhaps something else, but we wouldn't want to get a good look at there. But anyway, there we go guys, this is the room from the comics, it's pretty cool to see it included here in the game. And that's the hole that the girl digs to try and escape the room before she gets captured by the doctor. This next section is going to be really cool, we're going to get to see all the hands smashing through these cells in first person. It already looks like they're out of the cells though, so perhaps we don't get to see it as well in first person, I don't know. Oh, no, we do. We do. We do. We do. We definitely get to see it as well in first person. That's horrible. Ah, look at that. It's so creepy. Whoa. Ooh, that's creepy. That is 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 creepy. Oh, my goodness. He's come out to party and he got us. So we're in the shower room and I think I want to show you guys something really cool in here. Basically if we pull this box away from the vent in the corner there is a secret room and I'm really interested to see this particular secret room through Mono's eyes in first person. As you can see it's something quite disgusting. The doctor has left all of these sort of fleshy intestines and stuff inside this bathtub with this rotting body and yeah, we don't get to have such a good look at it in third person. In first person, we really get to have a close-up look at the victim himself or herself in this bathtub. We also get to see that on the bottom of this shelf, we've got all these pills and pill bottles. And it looks like there's like actual eyeballs and stuff in that jar up there. But yeah, this is just a really grotesque sight. This is what it looks like in third person. I actually can see a little bit more of the bathtub without glitching through it in third person there. 
but it is really cool to see in first person. With that said, I think we're going to head on past all the mannequin segment now, guys, because you've seen some of the mannequin segments in first person, and they're too hard to play that way to actually get through them. So now I'm going to cut ahead, and we're actually going to go down to the part with the hand fight and where we first meet the Doctor. Before we do go, I just wanted to show you this, a really close-up look at this particular mannequin as we stopped him in his tracks here. It's just a really, really good way to get a close-up look. A nice opportunity to get a close-up look at how he looks, how his body's been made up. Of course, you can see with the legs there, the body itself seems to be the only part of these things that's actually human anymore. Like if you look, they all have their human bodies still with the organs, but the rest of their sort of form has been changed into this more mannequin-like uh, appearance, even the head itself. That was creepy in first person. I keep cutting back to show you guys new little parts, but I wanted to show you all these arms like breaking through the boards in first person. That's actually really, really creepy and cool. And then we've got this room here, of course, with the sort of electric chair, which is where the doctor places his patients. I don't know if we can climb up on this. Yeah, we can kind of get a good look at it. The sponge there, of course, is a conductor, wet sponge on their head to put volts of electricity through their body and all the while they're looking at this spiral. So I don't know if that's got something to do with his process to transform them into the patients that we see throughout the game, but it's definitely an interesting theory there, isn't it? Nice. Come on, Six. Let's go and place our power cells. There you go. She puts hers in. We put ours in. And now we can head downstairs to see the doctor. Going down. Here we are on the doctor's floor. Need to turn that torch on. See all the blood stains on the floor. All the failed patients down here. These are the patients that really didn't amount to anything and so are just like stored down here by the look of it. So we're going to have another hand battle, of course. Coming up now. We're going to have to fight another lot of hands, but this time there's going to be two of them. Hopefully, we can do that in first person. Let's pick up this. Six is going to go over there to try and stop one coming out. There's our first hand. Smash. Oh, he avoided it somehow. Come on, then. And smash. Yes, we hit it that time. Come on, Six. Hold that still. Just a little longer. Smash. Yes, again, we got it. But now she's let the door go. The other hand's going to burst through. There it is. Oh, no. And go, and smash. Okay, we got the first one. No, the second one. We only need to hit this one one more time. Okay, that one's down. Come on, then. Feeling lucky? I'm feeling like breaking some fingers here. Six is trying to pull the boards off. Desperately. Come on, hand. And smash. Oh, no. Six is like, come on, Manu, hurry up. Right, smack. Gotta be quicker, gotta be quicker. Come on, come on, come on. And smash. Yes, we got it. Boom. Okay, let's help Six pull that board off. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to go for it there. There we go. Good job. That was teamwork. Oh, sorry, I shone the light in your face again. Now, this is actually going to be really interesting here, guys, because... We've, of course, got all the masks made by the Doctor here, and I want to have a really good look at these up close and personal in this first-person view. So as you can see, these are the masks. We've got Roger the Janitor's mask. Now we know it's a prequel, of course. We know these masks were made uh, by the Doctor and then shipped to the creatures we encounter in the first game at a later date. We've got some of the guests here, the masks that the guests wear, the cooks, 
all sorts of different masks worn by the different characters found in the original game. And it's just really cool to see this up close and personal in this mod. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying this video series and getting to see all this stuff through a fresh pair of eyes, so to speak. But we're going to head on. We've got some more masks there on, the, on this uh, sort of shelving unit here. But we've got the Doctor clattering about through here. And we're going to have to encounter him for the first time. There he is. Oh, that's so creepy. So horrific. Off he goes. Right. Let's go. So this is the doctor through Mono's eyes, up close and personal. Operating on one of his patients. Pretty morbid sight right there. We're just going to keep going. And under the beds. He's going to probably come through here in a sec. Yep, there he comes. Six, stay still, stay still. He's above us. This is so creepy. I can't tell if he's going to pick up the bed or not. Is he? No, he's moving, he's moving. Okay. Let's move. Very carefully. We don't want him to see us. We need to be careful here. Everything's going to be fine. Come on, Six. Creep, creep, creep. It's kind of easier to judge in first person. Like where his eye line is. We need to grab that building block over there so we can throw it at the button to get out of this room. Wow, where is he now? Is he above? He's over there. Okay, let's grab this. Come on, Mono. Okay, good. Very careful. Oh no, he's seen us. He has seen us. Whoa! He got us. That was nuts. Well, at least we saw his, like, grab tactic in first person, right? Now we just need to hide. I'm going to change it back to first person. There we go. Look at him crawling underneath. So morbid and gross. Get a good look at him. Scratching his little nose. Six is here with us. It's alright, Six. We're going to be safe. He's gone. He's gone. He's left us. I told you everything would be fine. And of course in this room, we need to get the key to unlock that door. To do that, we're going to have to pull this out and let Six push us through. So we're going to actually see- Oh! It's full of rotten flesh. We didn't get to see that in the normal game. That's just for a little easter egg for the modders out there, I guess. This whole tray is full of flesh. I just thought it was an empty drawer. That's horrible. So, of course, this is the morgue with all the bodies. We have to climb all the way across there to get to the exit. Oh, look at this sink. Why is it clogged with flesh? The plumber is going to have an absolute nightmare when he comes to do this place. Okay, so we've made it to the key on the top. We've jumped across. Again, not something I'm going to bother showing you in first person because you'll just see Mono's head glitching through stuff he's trying to grab. But we're going to have to ride this horrible meat carriage to the other side again. Six, of course, pulling us to the other side once again. So thank you for that, Six. Now we can unlock the door here. And we're actually getting close to the end of this chapter now. We've just got to escape the doctor. So let's head on to the next section. Okay, so we've arrived in the doctor's surgery. Well, it's not exactly his surgery. I think we saw his surgery earlier. This is more, I don't know. 
his like storage room or something where he stores all the bodies. You can see he's just looking for a fresh cadaver to operate on. And hey presto, he's found one. We're gonna leave him to uh, his crazy experiments. And we're gonna get six to boost us up into this little hole here. Come on, six, give us a boost. Thank you. Of course, in this room, we've got an interesting sight, which is this patient hooked up to a ventilation system to keep him alive. So what we have to do is climb up to the top, and we're gonna have to drop down on that lever so that we can stop the ventilation system, turn it off. Turn off a ventilation machine, and you'll see the doctor's gonna come through that door any second. He's concerned about the welfare of his patient. So you can see the patient's struggling, and he's like, "No, don't die!" And he's also seen us. That's horrible. We're gonna sneak out, and with Six's help, we're gonna go and get power cell from over here. In a minute, of course, we're going to have the chase sequence where we have to escape from the Doctor. Again, I'm not sure if that's going to be able to be shown in first person, but I'll give it a good go. Right, so we need to put the power cell in here. Okay, the Doctor's going to be coming back now. Yeah, there he comes. Run. Six, go. Oh, no. Go. Go, 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 go. I'm, de I'm dead. Okay, let's try again. Let's go. Keep running. Go, Mono. Go. Okay, we made it. Now keep running. Run. Go. Ah. Go. 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 Run. We actually made it. No way. Now the doctor's going to be just behind us, like pushing down on all the beds. Go, Six, go. Okay, run. There's the incinerator. We need to trap the doctor inside the incinerator, guys. So, you can see he's coming in. Oh, no. He's above us. He's above us. That's it, six. Help me pull this grate off. Okay. Let's get out. He's trapped now. Now we just need to roast him. Burned alive. Burnt to a crisp. And six just warms her hands on his ashes. Just toasts her little hands on his ashes. It's kind of creepy. But typical six behavior, right? We could get some marshmallows cooking. So that's the end of the doctor, guys. But with that said, guys, that brings us to the end of the hospital chapter as the lift comes down to take us up to chapter four, which is, of course, set in the city, the Pale City itself. We're going to have the viewers to contend with. We're going to have Thin Man as well to contend with. It's going to be a really, really cool chapter to experience in first person. But I hope you have enjoyed part three of this playthrough. I've been enjoying this series, going back to Little Nightmares 2, a game I really love, and experiencing it from a fresh perspective. With that said, let's head on inside this elevator. Up we go. And uh, yeah, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. And I will see you all on the next one.